news headlines and economic activities from around the world. This is Global Business Today. I am Elizabeth Williams. We start from Nigeria where Nigeria will be receiving 1.29 billion euros as that's about 1.3 billion dollars as support from the European Union EU to help diversify its economy away from oil. A document from the EU on Monday shows that the funding will be provided until 2027 under the EU's Green Deal initiative. It will, among other things, focus on enhancing access to renewable energy and boosting the development of the agriculture sector in the country. The funding will cover about 57 projects, including nature-based measures to reduce climate change vulnerability, combating deforestation and desertification, and a Ways to Energy initiative in Cross River States, that's South South Nigeria. Moving on elsewhere, when local currency loses value, what's next? The Zimbabwe Central Bank has said that it will start issuing gold coins as legal tender in late July as the country battles to control soaring inflation that has considerably weakened the local currency. The latest measure comes as the country's inflation rate uh, goes more than double last month to 191%, bringing back memories of the hyperinflation of the 2000s that saw the Zimbabwean dollar we dominated three times. Take a listen. Start selling gold coins this month. That move is a bid to tame runaway inflation, which has considerably weakened the local currency. The Mosi Otunya coin, named after Victoria Falls, will be available from July 25th in local currency, US dollars and other foreign currencies, said Central Bank Governor John Manguja. In a statement on Monday, he said the coins would be priced based on the prevailing international price of gold and the cost of production. The coin, containing one troy ounce of gold, can be converted into cash and traded locally and internationally, the bank said. Gold coins are used internationally by investors to hedge against inflation and wars. In Zimbabwe, soaring inflation has been piling pressure on a population already struggling with shortages. Annual inflation hit almost 192% in June. That's cast a shadow over President Emerson Mnangagwa's bid to revitalise the economy and stirred memories of the economic chaos under Robert Mugabe's nearly four decades of rule. Zimbabwe abandoned its inflation-ravaged dollar in 2009, opting to use foreign currencies, mostly the US dollar. The local currency was reintroduced in 2019, but quickly lost value. Last week, the South African country more than doubled its interest rates to 200% and outlined plans aimed at boosting confidence to make the US dollar legal tender for the next five years. And back to some update in Nigeria, the Federal Executive Council has approved an enterprise licensing agreement for Microsoft products and the clearing up of C-band spectrum to accelerate the deployment of 5G services in Nigeria. This took place during the meeting of the Council in Abuja on Wednesday and the presentation of three memos by the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Professor Isa Pantami. The government-wide enterprise licensing agreement for Microsoft products is a software acquisition cost reduction strategy for the government and would be implemented by the National Information Technology Development Agency, NITDA, under the supervision of the Federal Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy. The approved memos would accelerate the implementation of the National Digital Economy Policy and Strategy. Now, moving on to the oil and gas sector, oil marketers have given conditions that should be met in order to retain the pump price of petroleum motor spirit, otherwise known as petrol, at 165 naira per litre. The general manager of Corporate Communications Department of the Nigerian Mainstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, NMPDPRA, 
Kimchi Apollo said in a statement issued in Abuja that executives of the Southwest Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria paid a curtsy visit to the authority where the media demands no. Now, the marketers requested that the cost of petrol must be sold at the approved ex depot price at various depots, whether private or government owned, as this would enable fuel stations to dispense the product at the regulated 165 naira per litre rate. They also added that private depots were dispensing the commodity at higher rates than what was approved by the federal government, despite the many challenges in the downstream oil sector. Now, earlier, the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority had asked the marketers to report depots that were selling the petrol above the approved price. Of course, this is one of the reasons you see queues lingering in Lagos and, of course, still lingering in Abuja, the federal capital of Nigeria. Now, let's take a look at a rather sad story here where the secretary... General of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, Mohamed Sanusi Bakindo, has passed on. Bakindo died on Tuesday night, according to the OPEC Secretariat and the Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, Mele Kiare. Same day, Bakindo was honored by the President, Mohamed Ubari, at the State House in Abuja for his tremendous achievement at OPEC. The President described him as a worthy ambassador of the country. But earlier, when he was received by the president, Nigerian President Buhari received OPEC Secretary General Mohamed Sanusi Bakindo and uh, accompanying delegation from the OPEC Secretariat in Abuja, Nigeria's capital. Now, the meeting took place in part to honor Bakindo's two term tenure as Secretary General of OPEC. In attendance were, the, the, were Timitri Silva, Nigeria's Minister of State for Petroleum Resources and head of his delegation to OPEC. Melekiari, Group Managing Director of Nigerian National Petroleum Company, and MPC, and the country's national representative to the organization and other senior officials of Niger's petroleum industry. Your time in charge of affairs of OPEC has been a very challenging time for the global oil industry. Oil producers were finding it difficult to come together to address the challenges that was crippling the oil market. There is no doubt that your efforts in putting together the declaration of cooperation, which is the largest in the history of OPEC and the global oil industry, and also the longest in duration in the history of the organization. Meanwhile, OPEC Secretary General Mohamed Bakindo Tenner ends on July 31, 2022. Before his demise, he delivered a keynote address at the Nigerian Oil and Gas Conference and Exhibition in Abuja, which runs from July 4 to 7, 2022. At the 21st edition of Nigerian Oil and Gas Conference and Exhibition, July 5, Abuja, Nigeria, Bakindo says that... Uh, the biggest challenge for Nigeria is how to deploy technology and appropriate policies to address carbon emissions, not the switching of energy from one source to another. He also talks about efforts in putting together the Declaration of Cooperation, which is the largest in the history of OPEC and the global oil industry. Take a listen. As a result of the build-up of inventories, stocks of both crude oil and petroleum products around the world to a level that was never seen in history. It had reached over 400 million barrels a day over the industry's five-year average, and hence prices plunged to minus 10 US dollars. It was very obvious to me, Mr. President, that this was beyond OPEC alone uh, to address. And therefore, we needed to get the support of other leading producers around the world. And I recall I did consult with you during that time on telephone, and I benefited, I indeed drank from your fountain of wisdom. We had the tested toolkit in the Declaration of Cooperation that we signed in December 2016 that had worked 
for several years. All we needed to do was to dust it up and to amend it in order to face this uh, calamitous situation. And we were able to, as Minister Silver said, agree to withdraw 9.7 million barrels a day from the market, and this was the highest ever adjustment in the history of OPEC, in the history of oil because of the gravity of the situation, and we took a decision for a duration of two years. A few months ago, like two months ago, Mohamed Bakindo actually said that the oil and gas industry worldwide is under siege. Okay, now we are going to go for, take a breather. Join us once again as we examine the implication of worldwide cryptocurrency regulation as we bring you FinTech today. Don't go away. Okay, great to have you back on FinTech today. We shall be discussing the implication of worldwide cryptocurrency regulation. Now, cryptocurrency trading platform Paxful has said that Nigeria is the largest cryptocurrency trading country in Africa with a trading volume worth over $760 million in 2021. The firm said that in the year under review, the country had over 16,000 trades completed across Nigeria each day. The company also said that Africa was leading with the way, uh, the way for global Bitcoin, arguing that the markets in the continent had grown over 1,200%, with countries like Kenya, South Africa, and Nigeria ranking among the highest in grassroots adoption in the world. Meanwhile, European Union negotiators have reeled out the final details for a provisional agreement EU's crypto rules that will ensure a harmonized market, provide legal certainty for crypto asset users or issuers, guarantee a level playing field for service providers and ensure high standards for consumer protection. Now, joining me to discuss the implication of this worldwide uh, cryptocurrency regulation is um, Ms. Kala Obakbolo. She's a founder, Clip and Crypto Smart. She's also a business developer in blockchain. She will be joining me online as we discuss the implication of this new rule. And okay, hello, Ms. Kala. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, can you hear me? Hello, thank you for joining us on Global Business Today. Can we also see you? Are you there? Can you thank hear you. me very well? Yeah. Um, okay, can we also see you? Yes, yes, I am. Okay. All right, that's... Well, we, we are not seeing you yet, but uh, we need to see your face before we can have this conversation, though I can hear you quite well. But you can hear me clearly, right? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello, Miss Carla. Are you there? Okay, let's go. Yes, I can. Okay, okay, now. Uh, yes, we are... Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Miss, Miss Carla, can you hear me? Miss Carla, can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, beautiful. 
Okay, yes, now let's, let's move ahead with this discussion, talking about the implication of a word by, worldwide cryptocurrency regulation, the adoption, the fluctuations. So much is happening in the crypto world today. And of course, we know that Nigeria has a young population and uh, one of the highest trading crypto uh, record in the world today. Now, um, before, before we go into all of that discussion yet, uh, let's tell us, uh, you are a business developer in uh, blockchain, but you provide resources and education for the use of cases of crypto or blockchain. You also empower people to be financially independent. Now, uh, am I correct? Can you tell us a little bit about that before we move on? Ms. Carla, are you there? Okay, we're having a little bit of a challenge there connecting to Ms. Carla. But in the meantime, let's take a look at this report where European Union has reached a provisional deal on the world's first set of comprehensive rules to regulate what one lawmaker called the Wide West crypto market. Take a listen. The European Union has reached a provisional deal on rules to regulate the crypto market. The landmark law, known as Markets and Crypto Assets, is the world's first set of comprehensive rules to regulate a market that has been described as the Wild West. Under the new rules, crypto firms that want to issue and sell digital tokens in an EU state will now have to obtain a license from a national regulator. The license will allow operators to serve the whole 27 country block from one base and be liable for losing crypto assets from consumers' digital wallets. Currently, firms have to show an EU national regulator they have adequate controls to stop money laundering, but can only operate within that country. Stablecoins are crypto pegged to traditional currencies or commodities that aims to keep a steady value. The EU rules will give holders of stablecoins the right to claim their money back free of charge. Issuers will have to hold minimum levels of liquidity and will be overseen by the EU's European Banking Authority. Crypto firms will also have to have a registered office in the block to issue stablecoins and coins based on non-European currencies will be constrained to preserve monetary sovereignty. Industry officials say it will become harder to make money under these rules. As for NFTs or non-fungible tokens, it's a bit more complicated. Lawmakers wanted NFTs under the new rules, but EU states opposed it. That led to a compromise where NFTs are not included in the rulebook, but if they become fungible, i.e. mutually replaceable, regulators can force them to comply with crypto rules. The European Commission will assess within 18 months whether standalone rules for NFTs are needed. Bitcoin's energy use is a big worry for lawmakers. Crypto firms will have to disclose their impact on the environment and climate change using standards that the EU Securities and Markets Watchdog will draft. The rulebook still needs formal rubber stamping by EU states and the European Parliament before it comes into effect, which is likely to be in 2023 at the earliest. Okay, now we have been looking at cryptocurrency and uh, the markets, the regulation, especially in the EU, cracking down on certain uncertainties in the markets. And we have been trying to connect to Miss Carla, who is a business developer and uh, of blockchain, as well as uh, an expert in cryptocurrency and blockchain. Miss Carla, are you still there with me? Hello, Carla. Can you hear me? Yes, I am. Oh, okay, you can hear me now. Yeah, I am. I am. Oh, okay. Yes, I now, I, I, 
All right. I was asking you to tell us a little bit about uh, empowering individuals to achieve financial yes, freedom. Yes. We understand that Nigeria has a lot of young people and cryptocurrency trader, uh, traders or uh, trading is making the mark in Nigeria. Can you tell us what you do? Tell us a little bit about that before we go. Into okay, thank you so much. So, um, okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. So, um, I'm Carla, Carla Obakolo, um, also known as Carla God, and I'm a business developer in blockchain space. So, uh, essentially, what we do is build a blockchain product, um, mostly decentralized applications. And um, the, the, the span of value that we provide is way beyond on crypto trade. Crypto trading is just one um, aspect of the, the, the blockchain industry. You know, there are a lot of other values. There is the product management area. There's the area where you uh, perform business development activities, marketing activities for different companies who are building solutions that people can use, either finance or in art as far as NFT coverage or community, you know. So um, building one of the companies that I, I currently run is Crypto Smarts, and what we're doing is an asset management company. So that's for the finance aspect. We help people um, take charge of their finances who want to get into crypto. We want to get into crypto trading, and also investors who want to invest in different blockchain products that are coming up in Africa. So essentially, what we do is help them do it right. You know, um, a lot of cryptocurrencies are out there. But not every cryptocurrency is an asset. Some are just a work being created by a developer to get money from people, and then after everything we done, the token and all. But some of them are actually of um, um, laudable projects that can increase in value over time. So what we do is we help our, our clients, you know, identify these these um, um, crypto assets and then purchase them, you know, hold them over time and then sell when it's time because. You have to take profits. That's just one aspect. The, the next aspect is we have a tech arm where we build blockchain products. And one of the products that we're building at the moment is a savings product called um, the BitSafe protocol, and we're building with the Algorand blockchain. So that's for crypto smart. And then um, for Clip, I'm also the founder of Clip. Now, Clip is an, an NFT platform. And um, when you talk about NFT, people usually just see, um, you know, white listing activities, you know, buying and selling and all, but there are a lot more use cases for NFT in education, in research, even in politics, in, in fundraising, a lot of the things that we're doing. So what we do at Clip is um, use use um, um, NFTs to to portray this platform. That's use NFTs as education utility, as you know, commerce utility, decentralized commerce utility. There are a lot of other things that we could use NFTs for than just um, free things. So these these are the projects that um, um, I'm currently involved in. Okay, Miss Carla. And providing value. All right, let me come in here now. Of course, business. Uh, we've had a lot of reports in the news. Business Insider Africa reported in yes. 2021 that Nigeria is a leading country per capita for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies adoption in the world. It said yeah. around 300 million people globally in 2021 have owned or used crypto at some point in their lives. Now, the survey also found that 32% of Nigerians uh, have used or owned crypto at some point in their lives, too. So how true is this? Okay. <laughs> I would say, I would say um, probably that metrics is pretty lucky because... We get the influx every day, even with the crackdown of um, crypto uh, 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 adoption by the CBN. The, the more like we talk against it, the more young people you know come into it. And I, right now, it's not just young people; you know, the, the older generation also are coming into it. One one of the things that we see is um, from the beginning of I think towards the end of 2021 to the beginning of um, 2022, um, all the way to Q2. We had influxes of of all the people coming in saying, okay, we want to get into people, we want to get into right into. Are you still there? I like to look at how to integrate blockchain. Yes, I, I can hear you. Okay. We've, we've had um, some no, notable um, companies, tech companies or oil firms, companies who have 
some things to do with logistics. Identify that, oh, we could use blockchain for our logistics um, activities to make it um, 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 faster, you know, um, um, more seamless. And they've come to say, oh, help us create some sort of products on this. Then aside from that, um, businesses are getting wiser. You know, you know, people used to put funds with trading companies to trade the crypto market, the trade forex market. And we have this product where we say, okay, let's help you set up your own trading department in your company, such that at least if you're losing funds, you know why you're losing funds. You have people who actually come to work every day to trade your funds on your grounds. And, and the, the influx of this adoption has widely gone from just individuals in our country to now businesses, to, to um, um, structured uh, organizations saying, we want to, want to you know, get into people smart, you know, knowing what you're getting into and not just following the hype. So I think that that metric is really putting it lightly, you know, but okay. it's, it's way yeah. more than what Okay, Ms. Carla, Go, going by, yes, I, I, thank you for what you just uh, you know, said now. Um, going by the figures okay. I just reeled out before now, now, and what experts are saying, they say once crypto hits 50% usage around the world, it will become one of the most or the widest used technologies in the world. And we understand that crypto fulfills both personal finance needs and entrepreneurial ventures, including remittance, e-commerce, uh, payments, wealth, preservation, and social goods generally, like you did mention a few. Now, uh, recently the Apex Bank, talking about Central Bank of Nigeria, issued a secular on February 5, 2021 warning and uh, reminding local financial institutions against conducting crypto transactions or enabling payments for crypto exchanges. It directed financial institutions to close the accounts of anyone participating in or operating cryptocurrency exchanges. Why, why was that? What do you think was the reason? Okay. Um, from, from an economic standpoint, it seems like money is leaving because crypto the the the, the uh, exchange rates that crypto is being traded with is it's like oh more money is leaving uh, naira you know to get to us but let's look let's let's look at the metrics let's let's look at uh, what happened in 2020 before 2021 when crypto was was banned that this sort of remittances between um, um, commercial banks and exchanges was banned the rates have just consistently increased because they're only looking at oh money is leaving crypto to get money is leaving a naira to get into USD you know um, 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 through crypto. They are not saying that money is also leaving USD to get into naira to crypto. The 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 um, the the sort of revenue that these companies would have gotten, these banks would have gotten, you know, in facilitating exchange exchange between crypto and naira is just lost basically, and then. Stifling, stifling the, the the processes for people to make money through crypto means taking away another revenue through which people could make money in dollars and transfer to naira. If you've checked since twenty since twenty twenty one, I think in February when the the CBN uh, uh, released that that order, the rate has consistently gone down and, and not just gone gone down, it's gone down quickly, like really fast. Just here in uh, March, I think it was in March or May, yeah, in, in May, I was writing an article. And at that point of me writing the article, dollar was around five, five, five sixty. Right now, this is just July, this is the beginning of July, it's at 620. The, of, the, the rate of the, the devaluation is too much. And that's because nothing to hedge. Dollar is competing on different grounds, on different markets. That isn't the narrative, the same thing. Like before, if you wanted to trade on Binance, you would have to actually buy Naira. You would have to you deposit and then buy Naira first before you could convert to US. Busy. Okay. Now we're still talking about so regulation. That's some, some of, yeah, so, let's be uh, talking about uh, regulation. Demand that was based on Naira. So yeah. it, it, it created an avenue for people to demand Naira. But right now, what you're taking it. Okay. Go ahead. So right now. Can, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, okay. I can hear so you. Said right, right now, now what's ahead. just happening is they're just, they're, just, they're just making the dollar more more attractive, you know, giving it more use cases. 
I mean, if what 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 goes to say if if we have our own digital our own CBDC, and we can issue an edict and say saying that. Okay, Miss Carla, are you still there? Oh, <laughs> we seem to have lost her. Okay, she's back. Once that happens, I mean, common economic practice, demand increases, price increases. So the, the valuation of the Naira would begin to reduce because at least there's another aspect, there's another source of trade, source of demand for the Naira over the dollar to the crypto market. And that's something that I think they're not seeing. Okay. Are you still there? Okay, interesting. Now, uh, thank you for all of that. Uh, now, still talking about regulations. You no, know, like uh, I did say earlier, Europe is taking the lead in regulating the freewheeling cryptocurrency industry, if I may put it that way, at the time when prices have plunged globally. What would be the implication of that for Nigeria or Africa being one of the leaders in trading of uh, cryptocurrency? What do you think will be the implication? Okay, um, for for global global practices and local practices might differ. So the global, global practices would have some sort of um, um, goal. And one of the goals that I see with with, with the EU regulation is basically be, wanting to be able to trace where whatever transaction is coming from. That's one thing that I keep seeing every time. One find out where these transactions are coming from. Um, um, who is making what transaction? What do we tax? You know, how do we tax this this company? So that's one of the things I'm seeing. But when when you bring it to the local aspect of Nigeria framework, you find that there's one small problem. Um, CBN and SEC are not working hand in hand. For example, CBN releases an edict saying banks shouldn't allow this. SEC releases another edict saying, okay, let's regulate people. And the kind of the kind of um, 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 legal structures, the kind of regulatory structures that we're seeing are not what's going to favor the, the, the builders in the space, people who want to actually create products in the space. So the, the global, the global um, how do I put it, the, the global side of EU trying to regulate crypto, I don't think it's the same thing that they try to enforce that would work in Africa, that would work in Nigeria. So Nigeria has to find out a better structure on how to regulate people and also promote people, promote the young people, promote the builders in the space to build that, create some sort of structure that makes it easy, possible for them to build products that the world can use. Because that, that's something that can bring in more revenue. That's mm. basically, you're, you're going to be, be exporting um, services, digital services and goods from Nigeria to the rest part of the, country, of, of the world Let's build products that all different parts of the world can use and pay us. That revenue can actually come back to us. Because when you look at it, most of the, the products that thrive in Nigeria, take, for example, Binance. Binance is not owned by an African. Binance is owned by you know, someone from Asia. And like it or not, a lot of the monies that we spend using to trade and all that stuff are going to go back to that continent. What are we building for ourselves that our people can use and that others can use that we can regulate? It doesn't make sense to just regulate something that's for, for another person because they can always change their structures internally. You know, every every exchange has compliance of business. They can restructure and make it such that they're always making profits. But what are we using? What are we building? If we have products that we can build or we have a structure that helps us do, then the regulation can become easy because you know that, oh, if you, if you have this certain number of producers, this certain number of people who are building stuff in this space, you can let them know that this is how it should be built so that our economy can, can thrive through this aspect. It, it's easier doing that than just trying to regulate something that was created by somebody else, you know, built by somebody else, and then just using Nigerians as users. So I think, like, the, the, the structures that EU uh, are putting together, I don't think are the same structures that would work in Nigeria or in Africa. We have to find out our own structures Absolutely. and our regulation has to have the goal of making of, of making crypto I'm sorry, of making crypto um, um, contribute to economic development, to our economy, you know, overall.
Yeah, quite interesting. Thank you so much, Ms. Carla, for joining us on Global Thank Business you. Today to talk about fintech and, of course, our focusing on cryptocurrency. But, of course, we know that the EU also says that in no time they will be coming for non-fungible tokens, the NFTs, uh, regulation as well. <laughs> do, do you see that happening also? NFT, how, is it, be, how, how is it doing I, I so think far in Nigeria? What, what, what's the it will, trend? It will be more difficult than, than, than regulating people because of how NFTs work. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be talking more on this in our subsequent episode on Global Business. Thank you, Carla, for joining us on Global Thank Business you. today. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we have been speaking with Carla Obakmolo. She is a, a, a business developer in blockchain as well as the founder of um, Clip and Crypto Smarts. She's a Nigerian, a young Nigerian who is very passionate and uh, she's also contributing to nation building uh, in building capacity as well as developing capacity in the crypto world, or if I may say, the ICT world in Nigeria. And that's the much we can bring to you on Global Business Today. I'll stay logged on on ln247.news for more news updates, breaking news and other news headlines, business news headlines. My name is Elizabeth Williams. Many thanks for staying with us.